I'm not sure there's been a team as disappointing as the Broncos so far this season. They had a great defense last year, and that great defense still remains in 2022. You just think that bringing in Russell Wilson, a nine-time Pro Bowl quarterback, and yeah, that's a crazy number, by the way. I never would have guessed that Russell Wilson had nine of them. Maybe you would have guessed like six, but a nine-time Pro Bowl quarterback heard that on the broadcast the other night. You think bringing him in, man, that would really get the offense moving. But I think the sad reality is at this point that Russ just doesn't seem to have it anymore. And you traded a lot of picks to get him. Nathaniel Hackett is... I, I'm not even going to say anything too crazy because I'm taking over the team. We're going to fire him, but... Let's say that that might not be too far away in real life either. I had to do only Bronco country because the Broncos country was too long. I tried to take out the O in country. Turns out that wasn't allowed. But it hasn't all been on Nathaniel Hackett. I think some of the problems the Broncos have been facing really do revolve around Russell Wilson at this point. He just is limited. Uh, height is a big thing, believe it or not. It just it completely limits him from seeing the middle of the field. And open receivers do get missed. Sometimes they're just great coverage down the field. Receivers get taken out of the play. But that's when you hit your check down. That's when you hit the tight end over the middle of the field. And Russell Wilson just often does not see them open. And that's a really, really big issue. You know, he's still fairly mobile, but I don't think he's quite the extender that he used to be. So it's just kind of... It's a really bad situation for the Broncos, and you got to feel for them because, again, they do not have multiple high picks for the next couple of years. Javante Williams getting injured out for the season really didn't help. And Melvin Gordon uh, seems like he is the third string running back now because we don't count Javante Williams. Latavius Murray looks like he's RB1 and then Mike Boone in behind getting more reps. He got basically benched. Or not basically, I mean, he did. Garrett Bowles being on IR certainly doesn't help. It's just it's just not great for the Broncos right now, but we're not really focused about real life. We're taking this team and we're pushing forward and we got some good talent because Garrett Bowles is going to be healthy even though he's old at this point because he was one of the oldest rookies. He's 30 even though he's only been in the league for five years. So uh, this would be his sixth year, right? But Javante Williams going to be great going forward. Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick. That's a decent receiving core to work with. KJ Hamler is a fine deep threat. Uh, we got a great return man in Montreal, Washington out of Samford. And uh, we're going to look to improve the offensive line a little bit. I do like Albert Okwebenam. Greg Dulcich should be a pretty good tight end. Uh, I know the big O got essentially benched in real life as well. Eric Saubert is like tight end too. And then the defense is pretty good. Although in Madden, it looks less than stellar. I really think Patrick Sertan is becoming one of the best corners in football. I think there's a really good argument that you could say he's a top five corner in the league right now. You have your obvious guys that have been there that have done that at a high level, like Jair Alexander, like Jalen Ramsey. And then there's kind of, eh, who's number three? AJ Terrell was looking great last year, not so great this year. Trayvon Diggs was getting cooked last year, but getting interceptions, but has played really well this year. Inflation is absolutely out of control right now. The price of everything is going up, but there are some steps you can take in order to offset some of those costs. For the sponsor of today's video comes in, that's Upside. Upside offsets inflated prices by giving you cash back on your purchases. Upside is a great option for any of you that buy gas, go out to eat or buy groceries. They can give you cash back that can help you offset some of these costs. All you have to do to get started is download the free app. Upside is in the Google Play Store. It's on the App Store for iPhone. It's completely free. And when you use code Bengal, you can get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. And with Upside, you don't have to buy anything. You're not going out of your way. It's just things that you would already be buying that you can go ahead and get cash back on. Works really great with gas and gas, as you guys probably know, is super expensive right now. All you have to do, claim offer, check in with the store and you're good to go. And just pay as usual with the credit or debit card and then you get paid back. Pretty nice, right? With all the cash back I'm getting, I'm using it to further go towards more food, more gas. It's like an endless cycle of paying for things and getting money back and then paying for more things, but still getting more money back with Upside. So why Upside over some other companies that do this as well? Well, Upside's gonna give you three times as much cash back. Cash out anytime you want, bank account, 
PayPal, even an e-gift card or Amazon will work too. And that's probably why Upside users are earning more than $1 million back every single week, leading to a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. Just claim it every time you go to the gas station, every time you buy groceries, go out to eat, and you make some money back on the purchases you're already making already. It's a little redundant, but go ahead, go down in the description, download the free Upside app, use promo code Bangle at sign up, you get $5 or more cash back in your first purchase of $10 or more. And thanks to Upside for sponsoring the video. Darius Slay is really good. I mean, we could go on and on and on, right? But Sertan has cemented himself in that true conversation for being one of the best corners in the entire league. He certainly played like it this year, but we have to improve on some of these other spots. It's just aging players who just are not going to work out well in Madden. I love Baron Browning. I thought Baron Browning looked decent last year in his opportunities and had looked great in preseason and is starting to really get things going in real life. Baron Browning, I have really high hopes for for the Broncos, but Randy Gregory is just a little bit too old. Bradley Chubb is getting to be a little bit of, okay, do we extend him? Do we not? He's 26, but we'll be 27 when we try to extend him. He's only an 81 overall, and in Madden, it's not amazing. I do want to see him develop, but I don't know what his ceiling is in the game. But I can say a bunch of different things about this team. Justin Simmons, one of the best safeties in the league. But bottom line is, we're going to get into things. We're going to make trades. We're going to extend players near the midseason mark. And we're hopefully going to turn this Broncos team into a real contender. And whether that features Russell Wilson or not, we'll have to see. Though it is funny, every single team except for the Raiders is 5-2 and two in the AFC West here. So 3-4. and four. The Raiders are 2-4. and four. But this is kind of where this Broncos team was expected to be. You know, close, good games with the division and, you know, beat some of the bad teams. But they haven't really done that. A okay, team salary. So let's look at the players with one year remaining. So Kareem Jackson, probably not going to have any trade value at 34 years old. Melvin Gordon, no one's going to want to trade for him. Bradley Chubb, yeah, exactly. One year left, going to be 27. I would probably offer him a four-year deal. So we'll see what he's looking for. Dalton Reisner I want to extend, Raymond Jones, Darius Phillips. All in all, though, I don't really see many players I'd actually be looking to trade. Um, this Russell Wilson contract, man, seven years remaining. Uh, uh, we're going to be, uh, dude, what am I going to do with this? This is actually going to be a disaster. I'm going to do auto-generated rookies, of course. When I do a realistic rebuild, I'm going to go ahead and, of course, use the real draft class. But here... We're just going to have to draft really well in the mid rounds. We're going to have to hope that there are really good players down the board. And, dude, I, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but something's going to have to be done at quarterback. At some point, at least. Maybe not this year. We'll still try to rock out with Russ. But, dude, I don't know, man. It's it's not looking good. Oh, here's a player. Rashard Loud. Rocking that loud. A zone coverage out of Texas. Maybe something there in the uh, the second. This defensive tackle looks really good, though. Leonard Poe out of Georgia. They've been producing some pretty good interior defensive linemen lately, and that trend's going to continue into the 2023 draft. Is this the auto-generated Jalen Carter? I don't know. He looks pretty fantastic. That would be a player I would consider moving up for. His name is Aaron St. Louis, and it's guys like this. Bobby Briggs. First of all, that's a football name, right? Out of Oklahoma? Oh, I'd like him on my line. Listen, as a big Texas Longhorn fan, I hate Oklahoma. But I got respect for some of their players, and an Oklahoma boy named Bobby Briggs, man. A awareness, A pass block, get him on my offensive line. F run block power, he's got that farm strength, though, right? I don't care what any bench press says. Jose Farley, maybe a relative of Chris Farley? I, I could get to it. Great to elite everything, except for speed and strength, which are good to great, which is you know, pretty good. A deep route running, A pass blocking, B catching, B break tackle. There is potential here. Not super stoked on the draft class altogether, though. Like, it looks like it could be okay. Melvin Stanley, maybe a generational player. I can't say that for certain, but A catching as an elusive back and he's projected to go number one overall. He better be good. He's a running back. But let's go back to the actual Broncos. Kareem Jackson wants to return. Some of these players I would be interested in getting back for a year or two. Kareem Jackson would be one of them. Uh, we don't have a ton of money overall, so that's not really going to be at the top of my list. 
But Bradley Chubb, we're going to try and take care of first. He wants four years, going to be over 10 mil annually. I could swing this, though. I could. Up the money just a little bit for your contract. That would work for me. And Bradley Chubb returns. Dalton Reisner for four. Once again, I'd be in on that. I don't know if you guys can see the actual interest bar when I'm in the negotiation with my uh, my face cam where it is. It's tough. It blocks stuff when I'm on the left side of the screen. It blocks stuff when I'm on the right. Blocks stuff everywhere. Draymond Jones, another player I'd be interested in. We could shift 4-3. Go Draymond Jones on the interior. Bradley Chubb defensive end. Draymond is a player we want to build around. I would give him a five-year deal, and he returns as well. Now, other than that, I don't really have a big interest in anybody. Texas legend PJ Locke, maybe him. Jonas Griffith could have some value. Indiana State, kind of come out of nowhere player. He's played well, and he's 25. So there's something to develop here, maybe as like a third linebacker option. If we're in a 4-3, maybe that fourth guy. Darius Phillips is another guy I'd like to bring in. He's back as well. We got him a little bit cheaper and long-term. And then Kareem Jackson, it almost looks now that we wouldn't even have the money to bring him back. We're running low on funds. Russell Wilson's really going to handcuff us. And Kareem Jackson's just going to have to go. 34-year-old player. I'm sorry. And he's not going to have any interest. I can look around for trades, but I can promise you there's going to be no interest. I could see yellow at the absolute most. And we could get something back for him. But as you can see, every team in the league has red interest, which is not entirely surprising. Another Texas legend, Caden Cerns. Hook him. Ooh, Kwan Williams has a little bit of interest. Okay, Falcons, give me... Give me a third round pick for Kwan Williams. We're close. I will throw in Kareem Jackson. Actually, no, I won't, because we're still actually making a playoff run. So I don't want to do that. Uh, we have only third round picks, dude. It's no good. Do have a first in 2024, but... Nothing this year. I'll give you a seventh. And that's going through. K1 Williams to the Falcons. We just don't need him. Especially after the extension to Darius Phillips. We have, you know, three or four corners that are pretty good. And that's kind of all we need. So we made the wild card round at 10 and 7. We'll check out these stats. Keep in mind that, you know, this is a fantasy land and this is not what the Broncos are doing in real life. Does Russell Wilson throw for 5,000 yards in real life? I doubt it. I doubt it this year, but we'll see. Rushing, Javante Williams had 19 touchdowns. I guess that shows why Russell Wilson only had 26 touchdowns despite 5,000 yards. Javante Williams was a monster punching the ball over the line. Receiving Cortland Sutton, big season in terms of yards. Same thing for Tim Patrick, Jerry Judy, Albert Okwebenam as well. No big touchdown numbers, though, as you'd expect with Russell Wilson's number. Quarterback sacks, as Josie Jewell leads the team in tackles, 11.5 for Chubb. That's good. 8 for Gregory, 7 for DJ Jones. We'll take that. I think we're going to go 4-3. I think we're going to slide Randy Gregory down, who's got 30 at this point. He's going to be 30. So we'll slide him down. We'll slide Bradley Chubb down. We'll have DJ and Draymond Jones at defensive tackle. And... I think that's all there is to it. Didn't really force any turnovers, really. Five interceptions for the whole team. Not good. Ooh, Justin Simmons, plus one speed to 89. We'll take it. He should probably have superstar dev, by the way. Kind of weird that he doesn't. We'll simulate this first round of the playoffs. Didn't expect to beat the Chiefs. We're working to get to the offseason. You know, the Broncos could turn it around. And go 10-7 and seven to make the playoffs. I think that's a realistic thing that could happen. They've managed to win some games. Are they, you know, a true juggernaut playoff team? Yeah, probably not. But they could sneak in there. They just need to turn things around. As the Chiefs beat the Eagles 26-7 in the Super Bowl season recap has the MVP, Joe Burrow, and Zach Taylor, Coach of the Year. It is a video game after all. Justin Reed won Super Bowl MVP. And as you may or may not be able to see on that right side, Cooper Cup, Offensive Player of the Year, Aaron Donald, Defense Player of the Year, and the Lions had both Rookies of the Year, Jamison Williams and Aiden Hutchinson. So we do have $42.6 in available salary cap. Is there a way that we can pay Russell Wilson to retire? Can we buy him out and force him into retirement? <laughs> 
I don't know. I hope he does not play this seven-year contract. He's going to, though. It's going to be... It's going to be sad. Do I need to bring anybody back here? I don't think so. How do we get so much cap room, though? Somebody surely had to have retired. Show me Russell Wilson. Show me Russell Wilson. Nobody retired. I do want to see team salaries, though. You figure it's going to jump up with Russell Wilson, right? 22 to 35 to 55 to 58 and then down to 53 and then it'll go down after that. So the peak salary will be 2026. So you've got to really live below our means for a few years here. And this is probably the length of the rebuild. So things are not going to get easier. So where can we save a little money? Okay, Graham Glasgow. No, you're, you're cut. You're, you're cut. Mike Purcell is another one where there just isn't a need to have him. And, you know, I'm honestly strongly considering Ronald Darby, although I think I'd probably just choose to trade him. In real life, in the real life realistic rebuild, probably wouldn't trade him. But in here, you know, he's 29. He's fine. There should be some value there somewhere. Ronald Darby might be someone I like to trade. So we're up to 57 mil in available salary cap space now. And I don't really know how active we can be in free agency. So we no longer have running backs beyond Javante Williams. So depth there would be important. Could draft one. Uh, we could use a guard. I know I got, oh, okay, hold on. So Dawson Reisner is a guard who has played tackle before, who's played center before even, I think, at Kansas State. He was definitely a tackle at Kansas State for the most part, though. He could play tackle. He's got the size for it. Might have short arms. But we need to add another offensive lineman, that's for sure. Although, where is Natani Moody? Where is Natani Muti? I mean, he must have been cut by the CPU at this at, at some point. So we need to add an offensive lineman. Tight end is something I might consider drafting. Need to add depth at running back. And then defensively, linebacker. We have Nick Benito. I like Nick Benito as an edge rusher, but we'd slide him down. Iomuch Uwazurike. I still don't know how it's pronounced that way. Iomuch. I don't know where the CH is coming from at the end. Uh, also, looks nothing like him. Nothing like him. But that's obviously not a face scan. That's Nick Duvall from Giants Franchise. If you guys watch that series on my channel. Delar and Turner Yell cannot start at strong safety. I would move Caden Stearns over. Baron Browning. I, I mean, do I even need to switch to a 4-3? I don't need to. I could move Gregory or Chubb down, have Baron Browning be a rush linebacker, and then, I don't know, we'll figure it out. So we can't really afford to go after anybody who's not already interested in the team because I can't overpay anybody. Deron Payne would be interesting. Deron Payne has the most interest of anybody in the league, apparently. He's only 26 years old. Would be expensive, though. And he's like a nose tackle. So I don't really know what the value of that would be. I'd offer him a contract, I guess. But I can't really go over what I'm offering. If he goes to the Patriots, that's fine. Ooh, Alex Madison, Boise State Bronco, to the Denver Broncos, has interest. We need another running back. Deron Payne does go to the Patriots. I'd like to get Alex Madison, though. So we don't pick until the first pick of the third round. I use my focus points on Richard Loud, Tyrone Wilkinson, and Leonard Poe. They don't get up to 100%, but we do know a lot more about them, and they all look to be pretty good. The only thing is, will we get into position to be able to draft any of them? That's going to be the true test. It's going to be a big challenge. Because someone like Leonard Poe looks really, really, really good. But we'd have to move up quite a bit to be in a position to get him. Yeah, Leonard Poe is expected to go top 10. We're just not going to have a chance to get any of these guys. It's tough. It was at number 8 to the Vikings. So now my attention turns to Jose Farley. Round 1 to 2 guy. We'd have to move up quite a bit to get him as well. But in some of the best playbooks in the game, tight ends are really important positions to get. And, I mean... Enrique Bean is a, <laughs> uh, he looks pretty good on day three. And Jose Farley goes to the Texans. I was thinking about trading up, decided to go an extra pick. And of course he gets 
He gets drafted, but I have to move up quite a bit for a tight end. Do I move up for Tyrone Wilkinson? It's kind of like a combination of two stars from my Lions franchise series last year. Tyrone Wilbur and Raphael Wilkinson looks pretty good. Yeah, let's do it. We have three third round picks. Surely we should be able to leverage something in here to move up to the top of the second round. Maybe. Okay, trading a third round pick this year and next year and a fifth round pick to move up to 38 in the draft. To get this linebacker, just seems like a pretty good player. And in a class where we don't really have many high picks, we missed out on a lot of good players already. We got to take what we can get. And Tyrone Wilkinson is someone that I think we'll be able to build around. Has some good player notes. I think he should be pretty good. Only normal development, but he is also only 21 years old. We're going to have to see what the attributes look like, but I think he should be pretty good. Okay, so round three. These are the players I have left on my board. It's really just do I want Rashard Loud, another linebacker. Doesn't have great block shedding. Isn't the greatest athlete. I mean, is very good overall, but isn't, you know, a top end speed guy and he can't shed blocks. So I do worry about that quite a bit. And then Keyshawn Williams, though. I just think the way the board has fallen, Keyshawn Williams looks good. I think we should be able to take him later. So we'll go Rashard Loud and then Keyshawn Williams. Uh, a awareness for Shard Loud makes me think he could be pretty good. Only 83 speed at six foot 233. Does have hidden dev though. And this is one of those spots where it's like, okay, these aren't huge needs on the team necessarily. Although linebacker was a position I needed to upgrade. The defensive tackle's gone, which is annoying. Uh, but it's just kind of like the best players that we've seen, we've tried to draft. And I think, I think here I'm gonna look to trade down. Dolphins offering me a uh, third round pick next year. I will do that. Bobby Briggs is the last player on my board that is available. We'll take him. Does have hidden dev. 6'1", 293, so a bit smaller. We talked about him earlier. Does have hidden dev, 84 strength, 80 acceleration. It was an interesting draft. I mean, not the best one I've ever had, that's for sure. Ooh, Bobby Briggs is a 75 overall. That's my new starting center. Quinn Miners will be a guard, of course, which is, I mean, what he's doing already. I think we'll probably slide Lloyd Cushenberry over and Dalton Reisner to tackle Wilkinson to 72. It's not great. Lard is a 70 or not Lard. Eh, maybe he is Lard. Richard Loud is a 70. And then with the actual class, the running back was an 81. Very good, but not generational. Middle linebacker was a 78. What about some of the players I wanted? Damar Barksdale was on my list. He's a 76. Leonard Poe is only a 75. How is that? 92 strength, 81 power moves, 73 block shed, 79 speed, 80 tackle. I don't get how that's only a 75. He looks really good to me. And then the tight end, Jose Farley, I guess, is only a 75 normal development. Yes, maybe we dodged a bullet there. Not much of a blocker, but good speed, good catching, good catching traffic and spectacular catch. He's not bad, but normal development would have been disappointing to see at 23 years old, no less. And Alexander Madison, by the way, uh, didn't end up signing. So we still have a hole that we need to fill it at running back. He'll play left guard. Okay, Ronald Darby, I probably should trade. I moved Caden Cerns over to starting strong safety. I changed the team around a little bit, slid Randy Gregory down. Wilkinson, I could start over Jonas Griffith. Josie Jewell, uh, maybe I'll just like have him be a backup. I don't know. He's obviously better than what we have, but marginally, and he's older. I don't know. We're in, we're in a bit of a weird spot for sure. But Ronald Darby, I think I should probably trade him. So looking at my trade offers here, the one to me that stands out is for Jerome Baker. I'm going to go ahead and make that deal happen. Jerome Baker would be an upgrade at middle linebacker. This could give me a little bit more you know, reason to trade Josie Jewell. And then we're just, we're just upgrading a little bit, right? And Jewell, I don't know, like what's his value actually? You know, I'll take Steven Nelson for him. Sure. Steven Nelson could come in and compete to start and we're not going to be paying him, you know, very much as he's coming from another team. So he doesn't have a uh, star development or anything, but 79 overall, he's probably about 30 as well. So yeah, he's just going to be fine for a year or two. And I think we'll just play out the season. 
I think that's the only thing we can do. Well, despite my uneasiness in the team, we continue to perform well. Six and one. I don't really feel the need to change any of the playbooks because we're playing well. Number nine offensive points per game. Number five defensively. Our free agents are going to be Steven Nelson. Jerry Judy, who does not want to be back. Joe DiMaggio. Okay, Michael Ojemudi is a maybe, but probably. Lloyd Cushenberry, probably. KJ Hamler. I'd just rather have Jerry Judy. Judy doesn't really want to be here. He wants to go back home to Florida. I don't want Jerry Judy to leave, though. And he wants more money. Am I going to have to trade Jerry Judy after a 6-1 and one start? That would not be good. Oh, Jamudi is back. Cushionberry is back. We're going to risk probably franchise tagging Jerry Judy. I just think it's probably going to be the best move for us. Can't negotiate with Albert O right now. And then KJ Hamler, uh, it's a little bit too expensive for somebody that's not going to play a whole lot. We do have offers for KJ Hamler. Zach Tom, uh, I don't really like these. Perry and Winfrey, Kyle Phillips. Not really a lot here. I mean, Ben Barch, I don't really know why I would get him. Joshua Kelly, just because we have, you know, a need at backup running back. Uh, the value is there, but uh, I don't know. Okay, trading KJ Hamler, Steven Nelson, and a seventh for a second round pick from the Bengals. They're trying to make a push. KJ Hamler, Steven Nelson don't really have to be a part of our future. Both were going to be free agents. So it was just something that had to happen. And we're going to focus on bringing Jerry Judy back, except it's just not going to be this week. We'll simulate to the playoffs. It seems like we're going to be a part of them after a six and one start. So we'll look to continue this momentum forward and, you know, probably win 11, maybe 12 games. Wow, we don't even win that many. 10 and 7. Back-to-back 10 win seasons. We just haven't been able to keep to, uh, that momentum going in the uh, second half of the season. Russell Wilson, great year. 5,300 yards, 41 touchdowns to only 13 picks. Javante Williams was great. 1,100 plus yards, nearly 12. Had 17 touchdowns. I mean, no backup running back action going on. Cortland Sutton, great. Jerry Judy, very good. Tim Patrick was exceptional. The Big O. Played very, very well. It was a big part of our offense. And then Jerome Baker had a ton of tackles. 15 for loss for Chubb and uh, DJ Jones. And then nine and a half sacks for Randy Gregory led the way. Interceptions, five for Sertan. And then the rest of the team, uh, a bunch of different players with one. Baron Browning, I would sure like to develop. Really would. Really would. But I just don't know how good he could really even get for us which is a little bit concerning, I would say. It takes him about 10,000 XP to get up to the next level. It's just going to be tough for him to be very good at any point. He needs a big year, and he needs to get up to star dev or something. Richard Loud has star, probably. Yep, star dev for Richard Loud. Block shedding's not great. Tackling could be improved. He's too slow to ever move to safety. So... We'll just do run stopper. Discuss the potential weak leak or weak link of your team. I don't know that I've ever seen that before. What would our weak link be? Oh, it, it's telling us to? Oh, oh, our defensive unit is bad. Or a defensive unit. Like maybe you're talking about secondary. Or I don't I don't know what they're saying. I haven't seen the numbers. We're gonna say Um Slow down the run. I don't know. Beat the Colts and hold them to less than 75 rushing yards. That's right. We're playing the Colts with Jonathan Taylor. It's not going to happen. Where are we? Defensive pass yards per game is dead last. That's the weak link. All right. Well, I mean, surely this is going to go poorly. The 9-8 and eight Colts are going to knock us out of the playoffs. And they do. Yep. I didn't even have to see it. I knew they were going to. 26-20. to 20, And I'm not reading that reply. We're going to the offseason. And it looks like we're going to have to focus on improving our secondary. As much as I love Caden Stearns, unbelievable freshman at Texas, uh, we're probably going to have to replace him. Chiefs beat the Panthers, Jalen Hurts MVP, Cooper Cup Offensive Player of the Year, Aaron Donald Defensive Player of the Year, and then Keyshawn Williams. That's the defensive tackle I was looking to take down the board. Wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Simon Newberry, the new Bucks quarterback, is Offensive Rookie of the Year. I need to see this overall on um on what's his name can we do it from this screen we can okay cool all right Keyshawn Williams at eight sacks has superstar dev but probably got that so would have been a good star dev pickup down the board and it's unfortunate 
that I was unable to draft him. I thought we could just, you know, pick up a third round pick next year and then still get him anyway. He didn't have superstar dev when we took him, and he probably wouldn't have won defensive rookie of the year with our team. But still a missed opportunity. Okay, here we are. Players ready to uh, renegotiate. It's going to be Jerry Judy is the big, the big guy that we need to bring back here. I don't think anybody else... Ooh, Albert Okwebenam got up to star development. Okwebenam is a player that I like. Just, I, I don't know what's going on in Denver. I, I think maybe maybe blocking is the reason that he's not on the field so much. We end up extending him here. It doesn't mean I'm not going to look to upgrade the position at some point, but we'll extend him. And then Jerry Judy, I'm okay with franchise tagging him. He's not going to test out free agency. He thinks that he might... It's 30 million. That's so much, but hear me out. We weren't going to spend big money in free agency anyway. We still have some money if we need to spend on a player or two. And we keep Jerry Judy in Denver where he can help us win a championship. Seems like we're trending in that direction. Nick Bosa is here with interest. Rashawn Gary is here with interest. Devin White, Elton Jenkins. Of course, everybody is interested in joining the Broncos now. Xavier McKinney is someone that I'm going to look to target. Has big interest, and he now has superstar X-Factor. He's fairly young, only 26 years old, one of the younger free agents you'll see. I'm down to give him some money. I will pay Xavier McKinney. He'll come and play strong safety. We lose one Alabama safety in Kareem Jackson. We'll replace him with another. He should sign on. I cannot give Nick Bosa 31.8 per year. Rashawn Gary... I would consider. Devin White, don't necessarily need. I kind of like where my offensive line is. And I actually probably, I can take this down a little bit. There's no other teams trying to give him that much. Briggs, Star, Dev. I mean, the offense looks pretty good overall. Really does. We had to bring back Jerry Judy. It was, it was imperative, even if we did overpay for one year. I'm looking to renegotiate that at some point, obviously. Uh, Randy Gregory is here. Baron Browning did get up to Star, Dev. That is huge for his development. That's huge. If he can get up to 80 plus power moves, he actually might start to be effective as a pass rusher. Could bring in a corner. I just kind of want to bring in a big defensive lineman. And Rashawn Gary just fits that role so perfectly as a 3-4 defensive end. I know he's an outside linebacker in real life, which is still crazy to me. It just shows how great of an athlete he is. He's about 280 pounds. If we can get Rashawn Gary, that would be great. That would be great. It's not really even any teams going after him. Christian Fulton is the one. Has interest, young, good, give me Christian Fulton. Could bring Noah Fant back. We're down to less than $7 million in available salary cap. Not good. We did get Rashawn Gary. Jeffrey Simmons would have been a big pickup. He actually would have fit really well. No interest, though. That's okay. Did we get Xavier McKinney? We did. So everyone that we targeted, except for Christian Fulton, is signed on, which is, I guess, only two players up to this point. Christian Fulton, it looks like will end up being a Bronco here, and he is. So we've really improved our defense. Our defense was the weak link. We were especially bad, allowing a ton of points. Well, I think we've really gone and fixed that now. Christian Fulton, big addition. Xavier McKinney, huge addition. Rashawn Gary is going to slide down to left end. It just is a good fit for him. I know it seems crazy, but it's not crazy at all. He should be amazing. So Jerome Baker, by the way, huge salary cap hit to our team for someone that's good, but not amazing. Don't love that. Randy Gregory is another one here. We can't do anything with this. He's just under contract for a while, but isn't worth it, I clearly. But here's what we need to do. I think we've put the team in a position to be really close. We need to draft well. It's not going to be a quarterback. I don't even know what we take at this point. I just want, I want some talent. But I, if that doesn't make the team better, how many first round quarterbacks are there, by the way? But I don't, I don't even know what to do. Offensive line, I like. Tight end, I would consider. Running back's not a problem. Receiver, maybe. But I can already tell I'm not like, I don't think any of these guys look all that good. So you have basically no money right now, but also I am not thrilled with the draft class overall, but also I think the team's pretty good. I'm not sure what we would draft anyway. Jerome Baker, star dev, by the way, that's nice. Yeah, I have no idea what to do. I don't know that we have the money to trade for anyone that's actually like very good. The only thing I could see actually pulling off is 
trading Randy Gregory and getting a really good receiver or corner that's young before you have to pay them and then maybe doing the Jerry Judy thing. We're going to have more money next year because the Judy franchise tag is going to be off the books. But I think it comes down to corner or safety, linebackers, whatever. Like, we could have Loud play over Griffith. Has star dev, might develop a little bit quicker. Defensive line's good, but Randy Gregory and a first maybe, and just see what we can do. Also, Odell signed with the Giants in free agency, by the way. That's fun. Shades of Giants franchise. Okay, we made a trade happen. Randy Gregory and a first round pick gets me Michael Pittman Jr., who signed with the Titans and is now on our team. So now we don't even necessarily need to bring back Jerry Judy. We just have two Goliath, Goliaths. That's why was that tough to say? Two Goliaths at receiver and we'll be fine. Jerry Judy, whatever. We have Tim Patrick. Oh, that's not great. Tim Patrick's cool, but yeah, he's not amazing. Round two, pick eight. Jeff Harden's here out of Florida. Uh, seems to be a pretty decent tight end. I don't know if he'd start for us. Seems all right. Am I wasting a pick by taking him? Got a lot of A to C in there. I don't know. We'll, we'll take a shot on Jeff Harden. So the tight end wasn't amazing, but we didn't think he would be. I don't know. I'm just not thrilled with the way the draft class looks overall. I mean, I have no favor to the entire class up to this point. I don't, I don't know what I would do. I think I would just might take a running back here just to fill out the roster a little bit. He's got great speed, A ball carrier vision. Juke moves only a D. He's going to be bad. Ooh, very fast. Four, three speed. Also D juke move. I don't know. A ball carry vision and stiff arm. B break tackle. We'll take him. Normal dev. Great. We're just looking for more running backs. I'll have the CPU handle the rest, man. Like we could trade down. I don't know. Draft recap. Jeff Harden is a 69. He's bad. Eli Bayless is a 74. And the CPU took a 75 overall. I did, I think, use this guy as a focus player. Okay, well, turned out to be pretty good. Kind of forgot about him. 97 speed and acceleration. 79 deep route running, 81 spectacular catch. Okay, 94 change of direction. We might have something with Nasir Whitfield here. He's like kind of that that slot type with deep speed. I say slot type, I mean short. We know what I mean. His short route running was not great, but you know, explosive with the with the ball in his hands. That's kind of what we're looking for. The rest of the draft, yeah, it was bad. There were three 76 overall players and then, you know, many 75s and 74s and beyond that. What could we really have taken there? But all right, I'm pretty comfortable with where where we are right now. Like Baron Browning's not gonna be a rush end, which is kind of where he should be. But as a fun hybrid player, I think that works pretty well. I might even play loud over uh, Griffith here just cause star dev younger could develop better. But you know, I think we're just gonna run it back. The team has been fairly successful, especially in the first half. If there was a first half Super Bowl, man, uh, we would have won it. We're been in the running every year. Second half. Hasn't been so good. We are four and two. Chiefs five and one. I mean, they're in a fine position. Our offense is kind of lacking. Defense has played well. I think it's time for a defensive playbook or offensive playbook change just to get a little bit more, I don't know, consistent results. Okay, players ready to negotiate. Patrick Sertan is here. Justin Simmons, Javante Williams, Jerry Judy, Garrett Bowles. A lot of really important players and a lot of starters. This puts us in a really tough position. We have 91 million in order to get it done. And it does start from Patrick Sertan being at the most important for sure. And then probably I would say Jerry Judy. Quinn Miners is back. I really want to pay Garrett Bowles like 14 million a year. Not really, but I'm going to. Sertan. Ooh, the length is bringing the, why though? Justin Simmons is back. Javante Williams also returns. And I don't know about Jerome Baker yet. Jerry, Judy, Sertan. I, Judy's just going to want like 15 million probably. Oh, it's 10? I, I could give Jerry Judy 10, but I'm, let's go ahead and make it, make it the low risk offer. Five years. He wants more money. God, Jerry. And we made the playoffs. 11 wins, which is actually our best result so far. Even though, um, I don't know. It just, it's not amazing. It's good. It's good. But we didn't get off to the best start that we've had, but it's good. Russell Wilson, 42 touchdowns, another great season for him, rushing Javante Williams over 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns, 
7.7 per carry. Cortland Sutton was great. Jerry Judy had over 1,000 yards and 16 touchdowns. Michael Pittman Jr., 10 touchdowns. So if we lose Jerry Judy, it might not even be the worst thing because we went out and traded for Michael Pittman Jr., who put up double-digit touchdowns. We might not even bring back Jerry Judy, to be honest. And then tackles for loss, 13 for Rashawn Gary, 11 for DJ Jones, who we're going to let go probably, 10 for Chubb, and Rashawn Gary put up 23 and a half sacks. DJ Jones actually had eight, five and a half for Chubb, four for Jones, two and a half for Browning. I'm not really sure why the production for everybody else is so low, but Rashawn Gary obviously went off. That would be the, depending on what happened in this franchise, the single season record for sacks in a season, a little redundant, and then three picks for Patrick Sertan. We were good. I think we might finally jump into the playoffs here. Because we're in 88 overall. We sure could lose to the 84 overall Jags. But I hope we don't. Let's jump in. Jacksonville up early. They are a tough team to play in Jacksonville. It's unbelievable. Especially if you're the Colts. But we are up in the game. Although things now are tied at 17. Very close game here into the second half. Now into the fourth quarter. Next touchdown could be the winner, and it's 24-7, 31-17, I should say. Now 31-24, Broncos end up edging it out, beating Jacksonville in Jacksonville, and we're going to walk out of here with a win. Good first round of the playoffs. It was a little close for my liking, but we got the result we wanted. Division round has us going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Never like to see the Chiefs. Chiefs are a pretty good team. They're pretty consistent and they're always very high rated. We're both an 88 overall though. That's important to keep in mind. We've, we've turned this team into a, a really, really good team and we're capable of going toe to toe with the Chiefs certainly, but Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones we saw in there. They have a couple of superstar X Factor players that could make this game very difficult on our Broncos. But Broncos country, let's ride. Here we go. Come on, Denver. Out to an early 7-0. Now 14-0 lead. Defense playing fairly well against Mahomes, only allowing a touchdown here in the first half. It's 17-7. Now 24-7 into the third quarter. 31-7. It is a blowout in Arrowhead. Chiefs trying to get back into this game. It's a legendary Mahomes comeback. Oh my goodness. Although it's 45-30, and that should be it. 45-37 is your final. The Chiefs never gave up. Looked like they were out of it for a while, but they really made it close in that fourth quarter. Mahomes throws for four touchdowns, but is outdueled by Russell Wilson, who threw for four touchdowns on his own right. 379 uh, yards passing also surpasses Mahomes as well. And we haven't even had to jump in. We just super simmed and won every game so far. AFC Conference Championship is against the Colts, and they're pretty good. 87 overall. All right, maybe upgrading Mari Ford there, whoever that is, will uh, be the difference in this game. Here we go. Broncos, Colts, the battle, a battle of Peyton Manning teams. Here we go. The Colts are pretty good. We'll have to see Michael Pippen Jr. taking on his former team. Ooh, very close game so far. 24-13, we go out ahead. 31-13, 31-20. I need to get this over with. The Yankees just started against the Astros here. And it's good that we got a big time win. Kind of caught me off guard, but we do pull out the victory. 31-23 over the Colts and their quarterback, AJ Spears, in the battle of former Peyton Manning teams. Four touchdowns for Russell Wilson, can't complain about that. And we have made the Super Bowl, the 13-4 and Dallas Cowboys stand in our way. Let me show you the team. Whitfield didn't play enough to learn his dev trait. Probably going to be star. He's up to 98 acceleration and sprint speed, by the way. And dev trait is star. We have three guys playing up to 90 overall or more at receiver. A lot of depth there. Don't see any dev trait changes despite this being the Super Bowl week. So I guess we just didn't get any. But here we go. Super Bowl against the Dallas Cowboys. We have the better team, according to overall. They have more X-Factors, because somehow Zeke is one still. Here we go, out to an early 3-0 lead. Dallas ties it at three, before we retake the lead at 10-3. Dallas, of course, ties it right back up. And it's just a game of us taking the lead, and Dallas tying right after 24-17, makes it 24-24. And we gotta score a touchdown here. I'm sure Dallas will tie it at 31-31. It's been that way the entire game. And Dallas has the football somehow. 
How did that happen? What, dude, what is this? How'd they get the ball? You gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding me. We gotta call timeouts. Here's a run. Good tackle on Zeke. We gotta call that final timeout. Dallas will take the lead 34-31 with a minute and one second to play. We have no timeouts, but we can we can at least tie it here. All right, we need somebody to get open here. Okay, Russell Wilson knocked and that, that okay, that was third down. When Russell Wilson refuses to throw an accurate pass, makes it really tough to win these games. We're gonna have to go hurry up here. That takes off a decent amount of time. Down to 24 seconds. Working off play action, sit down, make the catch. We gotta get to the line. Snap the ball. Oh my goodness. Just get out of bounds. Javante Williams, get out of bounds. A 43, it's a 60 yarder. We're in a dome though. Brandon McManus, I need you here. Mike McCarthy gonna try and ice McManus. We gotta hope we're accurate, here we go. Got the power. Did we get the accuracy? Kick is good. Iced in the Super Bowl. Last second game tying field goal to force overtime. And Cowboys win the toss. Playoff rules though. So we will get a chance to uh, get the football back if Dallas scores quickly. Fourth and two. Dallas will punt on fourth and two. We're going to have a chance. Field goal ends it. That's all we need to worry about. Get three. Huge third down and seven. Is it four down territory? Doesn't matter. We got it to Jerry Judy. Tried to go up and spec catch it. That's why we had that little weird hurdle after he caught it, but that's a big chain mover. We'll roll out, throw on the run. Wilson got it there. Great toss by Russell Wilson. Stepping up with Wilson. And don't fumble. Judy, wide open. Wilson hits him, Judy, touchdown, game over. Broncos are Super Bowl champs. Walk off. Is this at AT&T, by the way? It's in A-Dome. I didn't even realize that. Is this at AT&T? It sure looks like it. I think that's that big scoreboard coming down. Haven't made it up to uh, Dallas yet to see the Cowboys at AT&T. Of course, I'm a Giants fan. They would. You know, there's opportunities for it, but I uh, just haven't done it yet. Lived in Houston now since 2019, but that's it. Super Bowl champs, Russell Wilson, the Broncos have done it against all odds here in what, 2024, 2025? Either way, Super Bowl champions. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This was a fun one. And um, the Russell Wilson contract looks a lot better in game when he leads you to a Super Bowl championship than... How it does in real life because it gets really expensive not sticking around for it i'll see you in the next one take it easy